As we ran around the planet at 17,500 miles per hour, you saw this green glow when you were in the southern hemisphere. And in the northern hemisphere, you see these purple and yellow and blue lights just popping from the particles hitting the atmosphere. Every orbit, the sun rises and sets every 45 minutes. So as you go around the planet, you see this setting, and then another 45 minutes later, the rising of the sun. On my first mission, I was told that cosmic rays would come through the vehicle and hit your optical nerve. It would make you think you're seeing flashes of light, even though that's not really happening. The flashes were like a sunburst of different colors. You would see this streaks of, of color popping in your eyes and in your head. Sleeping in space is pretty incredible because you're floating inside your sleeping bag, but then you had this whole den of pumps and motors and things whizzing around you, and so it's almost like a, you're in a factory and a mechanical kind of sounding automation going on. My dreams were so vivid from all the stimulus from the day. I saw blues, greens, whites, whether they came from the ocean, whether it came from the sun, or whether it came from flashes in my head from these high energy particles. The colors were intertwined into my dream state and I saw sometimes alien forms. The green aurora australis is moving and dancing, so you know, you think of the little green man on Mars. There was one point in the mission where I started dreaming about an inside out cheeseburger with the most grease and you know, just chomping into this hamburger. It's something that we cannot have in space and also a big, big slice of pizzas. I think because I've had these experiences and I've seen these incredible things in the universe, all of that's now incorporated into my dreams now. So I, I constantly dream about lights flashing and colors and velvet pitch black night sky and these little white lights coming through. My name is Leland Melvin. I'm an astronaut and a great big storyteller. Eating in space is incredible because you can play with your food. You can float your food away from you and fly into it and go get it, or you can have someone throw food to you. I play with my food every chance that I got. We would just open up a bag of raisinets and let them float in front of our face and so we would <laughs> and then water bubbles and M&Ms make a very cool science experiment where you're throwing M&Ms into the water bubble and they migrate around the top of the water bubble. That's Liquids in space is a lot of fun because you make this water bubble grow and grow and grow. You detach the straw from it and then you float over and you suck the water bubble. So the museum gift shop freeze-dried ice cream is not something that we have in space. We have these different types of thermally stabilized and irradiated food so that the food can last for a long time in space. Because if you take fresh food up there, it will start to get stale in space or start to mildew or mold. My favorite food in space was, I think, the beef brisket. And then we had macaroni and cheese. We had um, string beans with almonds. It had a nice flavor. And then the smell was pretty much the same, but some astronauts' taste buds get desensitized to the taste, and so they want more spices. We have pepper, and we have salt, and we have hot sauce and things that we use for our meals. I think the best part of eating in space was having this meal with a community of people from around the planet, some of which used to fight against. And so people are all convening, you know, breaking bread while we're floating in the galley in the middeck. <laughs>